Are you a Trekkie? Or maybe a fan of interstellar or gravity? Or maybe you've channeled your inner Peter Parker and have a NASA shirt or phone case. Either way, did you know that the Philippines has its very own space agency? Come join me today as we learn more about the NASA of the Philippines. I'm your host, Francesca Palabrica, and this is Circuit Rikit. Hello everyone, I'm here today with Ms. Jo Briones from the Philippine Space Agency. So Ms. Briones, thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you for having me here today. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Ah, uh, so I'm Jo Briones. I'm one of the information officers of the Public Relations and Information Division of the Philippine Space Agency or FILSA. So Ms. Briones, what can you tell us about FILSA? What is it? Right, so FILSA, or the Philippine Space Agency, is a relatively new government agency. Um, it was created in 2019. So on August 8, 2019, the Philippine Space Act, or RA, Republic Act 11363, was signed into law, and thus the Philippine Space Agency was created. So FILSA is the primary policy, planning, coordinating, and implementing body of the Philippine government with anything regarding space. And FILSA is also... Um, the primary advisor to the office of the president on any matters regarding space. So this is all in space, but how do the projects of FILSA affect the average Filipino? Why do we have to care about what happens in space? So the mission of FILSA is to promote and sustain a robust um, Philippine ecosystem to create value in space for and from Filipinos and for the world. So when we talk about um, value creation in space, we first talk about the space data value chain. So this value chain is composed of different components, which when manifest and working together, they lead to the realization of socioeconomic benefit. So it benefits Filipinos in each aspect of that chain. And we can talk about that later as well. Actually, let's talk about that. What is this space value chain? This space value chain, it's a chain, and it starts with uh, what we call the upstream, the upstream component of space. So when we talk about upstream, it's anything that we send up to space. So that includes satellites, rockets, space stations, anything essentially that you send up to space. So that's the upstream of things. One of the projects in this upstream component is the Build, Build, Build in Space project, or B3IS. And under that project is the development of the Mula satellite. So the Mula satellite is the next generation of satellites. So if you know about the Wata 1, the Wata 2, the Maya series, Mula is the next generation of satellites. And this is going to be a Filipino-designed and Filipino-built satellite. It will have different missions that will address different challenges that are faced by the country. What do you see in the future for FILSA? What do I see in the future for FILSA? Well, of course, we do aim to actually be, you know, the equivalent of NASA here in the country. We want to be able to create value in space. And we also aim to create more jobs, not just for people in STEM, not just for the scientists and engineers, but also um, what we call the allied fields that we, do not, we don't really necessarily um, consider or think first that are related to space, like for example, policy, because we have space policy, um, we have space law, we have space science communication, um, etc. What are the applications or how is FILSA relevant to this post-pandemic world? All right, so to answer that, we go back to the topic of the space state of value chain. So I mentioned that it starts with the upstream. And then after that part, we ensure that this upstream segment is able to capture data from space. And we ensure that this data is accessible to the public. So after that, we have what we now call the downstream applications of space, where in upstream applications are able to get that vantage point and gather data from space that can be used for different applications. So we have food security, transportation, national security, hazard management, and climate studies. So those are examples of um, applications of space data. When we have this data, we also have to ensure that we have the infrastructure that can download this data and be able to process it. After processing it, we ensure that this data can be analyzed 
and the analysis of this data can be useful, for example, to farmers or to LGUs or people who are decision makers in their areas. So an example would probably be the Pinas project. It is a project handled by the Space Information and Infrastructure Bureau, wherein they go to different places, different provinces in the Philippines to inform them about the different space data that is available. They go on the ground, they get to know what are the issues on the ground, what they need data for, and then they have workshops to enable these individuals, and mostly these are LGUs, to understand data, the space data more so that they could use it for their uh, applications. So do you have any words for anyone out there who may be interested in joining FILSA or just getting into space science or space in general? That's a very good question. Um, if you may have noticed, when I talked about FILSA, it was um, ra in a rather broad manner because um, we wanted to show you that um, everybody has a place in space. So whether you want to um, go into the upstream of uh, ap upstream applications of space or the downstream application of space or any part of the space data value chain, there is a place for anybody in space. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not just for um, the scientists and engineers, it's not just for STEM, but also in the allied fields. So we, we would encourage people who are in the social sciences, who are in policy planning, et cetera, to be part of you know this entire space ecosystem. Because space might seem like a lofty goal, for people, it seems it seems out of reach, almost quite literally, because it's in space. But everybody is affected by space. There are a lot of technologies that we might not know are actually, you know, space-based. Like for example, the, the the basic things like GPS. You know, that's that's space um, space technology. Even the cameras on your cell phones, the selfie cameras, they were created as an offshoot of the different sensors that they put on cameras that they sent to space to capture data from stars and all of that. So, yeah, um, I think I'd also want people to be more curious because it's it's with that curiosity that you find interest and eventually your passion. Because right now, you might not think that you are um, meant for you know space, but there are different aspects of space science and technology applications that anybody can be a part of. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. And thank you for watching all the way up to the end. Once again, this is your host, Francesca Palabrica. And I am Joe Briones from the Philippine Space Agency. And, and this, this is, is Sir Kit Rikit. Don't forget to stay tuned to find out more about what FILSA does. Follow us on our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Philspace Agency. And you can also follow us on our website, www.filsa.gov.ph.